We have more or less, uh, again, I have not spoken about methods like the Babalat's lemma, which is a comparable method to Lasalle invariance. Not Lasalle invariance, but more like uh, Babashin Krasowski Lasalle. Um, we have not, of course, gone there, but uh, um, we are more or less at the end of the analysis part of nonlinear system that we wanted to cover. Yeah, again, many more things out there. This is what we wanted to do. Okay. Um, now, um, so anybody who is interested in doing more in depth analysis for nonlinear systems, there is a very nice NPTEL course. Uh, this is run by um, Arun Mindarkar and uh, Ramakrishna Pashumarthi in IIT Madras. So, they have a nice NPTEL course on nonlinear systems analysis. Okay. So, they cover analysis in significantly more detail. Yeah. So, they have all these things like Poincar Benedictson theorems and then so, so a lot of more uh, depth in terms of nonlinear systems analysis, I would say. Uh, I have sort of skipped some of those uh, because again in the interest of moving more towards the design part of things. Okay. So, in order to start design, control design for nonlinear systems, which is what we want to do now and henceforth. Uh, the first thing we need to understand, which is again a little bit of, seems a little bit theoretical, but it is actually quite useful, we will start to use it rather soon, is control Lyapunov functions. Okay? So, until now, you have been seeing these Lyapunov functions, which are purely a function of state. right? But I hope you understand that as control engineers, we are not just looking at uh, dynamics, which are functions of purely the state. right? We are interested in manipulating the dynamics right i mean if somebody asks me what i do i actually t and they are probably not in the field i just tell them i manipulate differential equations really what we, are, we do we have a control term and we just manipulate differential equations and try to get a particular behavior that we are interested in okay now this differential equation could be a model for anything yeah and there are so many things that now folks in control are working on so i mean i mean the the possible playground is huge, huge. Okay, so um, uh, so now we start moving into uh, functions of both state and control. Okay, and then we see what these functions have to satisfy, what properties these functions have to satisfy, so that they are good. Uh, you know, they help you design good controls. Okay, so usually direct. Um, so, you might think that we design controllers by just looking at a system and guessing something. No, you actually, uh, at least folks who do nonlinear system, nonlinear control, they first design a Lyapunov function or a control Lyapunov function. And then they use the control Lyapunov function and try to make it negative definite using the control term that appears in the control Lyapunov function derivative. Okay, so that is the idea, right? So, that is how we typically approach all uh, control design problems yeah this is typically called lyapunov redesign yeah so we use the lyapunov function to design a control yeah not the other way around i am not designing a control first again for linear systems too easy yeah it's just minus kx you have to choose a k so it becomes easy but for non linear systems such simple structures will not work so there's no way you'll be able to guess a controller very easily so you do this you actually uh, guess a lyapunov function potentially uh, an energy of the system or energy like term and then you try to uh, design a controller based on trying to make v dot negative okay and control Lyapunov functions are what give you the basis for choosing such v okay so uh, we we are usually looking at systems of this form yeah I, again just for being very precise because this was a sort of a, a text kind of a material that we were writing so, you, you see all the arguments being presented here, but I would write it as x dot is fx ux. Yeah? So, the only thing that is worth noting here is that uh, the control is a pure function of the state. Okay? We assume that the control is a purely a function of the state and not time explicitly. Time does not explicitly appear here. 
okay so this is uh, important and of course you have the i mean everything in different domains you have the states in going to uh, in rn control in rm and the vector field in whatever i mean accordingly defined vector field okay um, we of course assume existence of solutions and so on okay all right um, one of the typical assumptions that we also make is that there exists a continuous feedback which guarantees that the origin is asymptotically stable okay we don't use it immediately so let's not worry about it too much for now okay um we assume the existence of a stabilizing feedback is what we are saying uh, actually we don't use it much at all in our discussion this is for something later uh, because we actually in 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 our discussion we'll be talking about when does such an alpha exist okay that's what is the aim here okay so first things first what is a control lyapunov function this function v which is now still a function of purely the state by the way okay this is not a time varying system just like our lasalle invariance discussion we are still not working with a time varying system it is purely state dependent okay time doesn't explicitly appear on the right hand side okay okay great so we assume uh, the function v which is a function of the state and mapping to a real number of class c infinity we are already assuming it's a smooth function yeah is said to be a control lyapunov function for this system if these assumptions are satisfied okay so remember until now as always v has no connection to the dynamics at all v is just a function of x yeah could be anything sin x cos x sin square whatever we just have to satisfy some assumptions okay so until now v just like in your lyapunov uh, theorem statements not a function of the does not have any connection to the dynamics at all right uh, but we start by saying that it is positive definite okay if you see this is just the positive definiteness assumption right the locally positive definite or lpdf or whatever we have been calling it positive definite function and in fact the first statement is what makes it a candidate lyapunov function also okay okay so even the control lyapunov function the first requirement is that it's a candidate lyapunov function okay the second requirement is the interesting requirement it basically says that the infimum over all controls of v dot this is actually v dot by the way right the way we've defined it it is partial of v with respect to x x dot which is this this has to be strictly negative for all x in br and x not equal to 0 okay this pretty much looks like the negative definiteness of v dot right pretty much looks like negative definiteness of v dot so as such no big difference the difference is very subtle what is this subtle difference i am not implicitly saying that uh, v dot is negative definite without the control or something like that i am saying i should be able to choose a u okay such that v dot becomes negative definite for every x okay so remember this is very interesting huh? so i am not necessarily defining a smooth control or even a continuous control i am just finding some points here okay look at this the only thing that i am minimizing or finding the infimum over is the control okay and here x is fixed i fixed an x when i compute this guy i fix some x all right and i compute this entire thing which is now a function only of the control yeah because notice the infimum is only over the control so i fixed an x in this whatever bound, you know bounded domain yeah and then i compute this quantity and now i am saying that once i fixed an x i can always find a u which is now again some some point right some some vector in rm some single vector in rm right not a trajectory or anything like that just a single vector in rm right such that this becomes negative yeah so if i so the important thing to remember is that i might just get points which look like this for different values of x i might just get these distinct points they may not, it may if i join them together i am not necessarily getting anything continuous right 
because typically if you remember i said that this course is about finding smooth control continuous control and things like that right but here it doesn't this itself doesn't seem to guarantee this will happen right your control that or u that you compute from here might just be these distinct points which when joined together don't give anything continuous okay you might have jump jumps and so on because you're just trying to find an infimum over u which is negative okay so this is the subtle difference you are allowed to play with the u in some sense so that you get some negative v dot okay anyway this is what we do in control right so we play with the control so that you get stability yeah but important thing to remember doesn't guarantee continuity of the control okay all right so this is what is a control lyapunov function a function which is a candidate lyapunov function and gives v dot negative if you take infimum over the u all right great example okay uh, this is the system all concocted cooked up system don't worry about it enough for us to understand what's going on yeah so this x dot is x minus 2 u cubed okay again i have written it as a function of x and all that don't get so worried about the notation because it is a text so so we have to write it very precisely okay we have assumed all n and m is one that is the state space is one dimensional the control is one dimensional okay again too easy now what do i say i claim that v equal to x square by 2 is a control lyapunov function yeah remember this looks pretty much like the lyapunov functions we've been choosing right so we which is not so surprising because the first requirement is that it has to be a candidate Lyapunov function, right? So the Vx that I choose for a control Lyapunov function has to be a candidate Lyapunov function. So structure cannot be too different. The control Lyapunov functions also have energy like structure, some quadratic terms or some something that cannot become negative and things like that, okay? So, so Vx equal to x square by 2 obviously satisfies this condition yeah no problem it is 0 at 0 and strictly positive for non-zero values of the state x okay now the second condition requires me to compute del v del x fx u yeah which is just in this case x x dot right and x dot comes from here right and i get this right x square minus 2 x u cube okay now obviously what do I have to do? I have to fix x and find a control which makes this thing negative. Okay. Now for me it's easy. Um, I mean I have given some examples. Suppose I fix x at 1. Then this is 1 minus 2 u cubed. I can take control to be 1. Works because this becomes negative. Similarly if I take x to be 2, I get 4 minus 4 u cubed. I can take control to be 2 becomes negative right i can't take u to be 1 because whatever it will not become negative that's a problem right so i take u to be 2 i could have taken 1.5 also yeah so i can get distinct points discrete points like these also yeah because i can choose anything greater than 1 here here um, sorry anything greater than 1 here anything greater than 2 here and so on and so forth anything greater than 3 so i can get all these discrete points here no problem okay now i have a nicer solution also because if i choose my control such that u cube is actually equal to x okay suppose u cube is turns out to be actually equal to x yeah then this is just x square minus 2 x cube x u cube which is x square minus 2 x which is minus x square which I know is negative definite, right? We've already done this many times. Huh? And again, this is also not a unique choice. I could have taken x by 2 also. So that would have become, you know, minus x square by, wait a second. No, that would have not have worked. That would not have worked. Yeah, it's okay. But you see, it's not a unique choice. I can take u cube equal to x, uh, u cube equal to 3x by 2 and things like that. Yeah. So it's not a unique choice. Okay. I can have many such choices. But the point is I have such as u cube equal to x a nice, in fact I have given a function interpretation to u, right. Until now, here I was constructing 
individual points given one x, right? Here I have constructed a signal, right? So already some improvement for me. Right? So I have constructed a signal u. Okay, great. Now small problem. I don't know. I hope you notice. U becomes this if I choose u equal to x cubed. So if u, if sorry, if I choose u cubed equal to x, the control is x to the power one by three. Huh? Very nice everywhere, but at the origin. Yeah, because the derivative is this. Yeah, at the origin is going to blow. The derivative is blowing up. Right. So it's not smooth. It's continuous. In fact, it's smooth everywhere, but at the origin. Okay, and origin is actually an important point for us because that's where we want to go. It's not like it's outside the domain, so we don't care where it goes and so on. Yeah, this is an important point. So there is a certain weakness in this control. It will behave poorly uh, when you get close to the origin. Okay, it will start becoming doing funny things. Yeah, very fast changes and things like that as you get closer to your equilibrium. Huh? Bit stupid, right? Anyway. So, uh, so obviously, if researchers who are working on these control Lyapunov functions wanted to achieve something more, and they realized they can achieve something more only if they specialize to control affine systems. Okay, what is a control affine system? Affine means linear. Okay, uh, control affine means linear in the control. Okay, all right. If it was both state and control affine, then it would be a linear system. Yeah, but it because it is only affine in the control, uh, it is not still a nonlinear system. So you typically write it as f zero plus summation of u i f i. Okay, uh, so this is a very nice. I mean, if you don't like this uh, overload of notation, you can write it as. Okay. Why the index m? Because there are m controls. So each ui is actually scalar valued now. Yeah, each ui is scalar valued and f0 and fi are vectors of uh, dimension n. I hope it is evident to you. Notice that this guy is a subset of Rn. It's a ball in Rn. Okay, is that fine? It's a ball in Rn, not a ball in. Yeah, it's not scalar because control is also state dependent. Only thing, states are evolving in the ball. Right? It's not a ball in whatever, scalars or anything. Okay, so so notice that each of these Fi's f0 and fi are n dimensional vectors okay and this is a very uh, uh, this is what most nonlinear theory on controllability observability all this relies on these vector fields yeah these are called vector fields why because once i give you any point in the state space okay what does this represent these represent velocity directions f0 fi these are velocity directions i hope this is if the control is not there if control is zero then you get a velocity direction from this right so given any point in the state space this f0 x actually tells you which way you are getting pushed at that point which way the state is going to get pushed similarly fi x is telling you which way the state is going to get pushed if that if ith component of control is one okay so these actually, this is, I hope this is evident to you, this is what def helps you talk about controllability and observability. Because if F0s and Fi's are funny, for example, if F0 and Fi are both such that the last three components are zero always. Okay, for all F0 and Fi, if last three components are zero, okay, it is n-dimensional. So last three components are always zero, all zero for F0 and all Fi's. Then, it's obvious that I can't make any movement in the last three directions, right? If you think R3, X, Y, Z, and all F0s and all Fi's have zeros in the Z, Z row, that is the third row, 
then I can't make any movement in the third direction. Whatever control you apply, how does it matter? You can't move in the z direction. Wherever you started in the z direction, you remain in that point in the z direction. So I hope it's evident to you that controllability is defined very neatly and nicely using these vector fields. Yeah, it's a vector field because given a point in the state space, it generates a different vector. So it's a field of vectors. Okay. So F0 is called the drift vector field because that is what the system drifts even if you do not have control, it will drift in this direction and FIs are called control vector fields, standard terminology. Okay.